It's day six of the main event. Yes, sir! Just over 200 players remain. Crazy. A field full of remarkable stories. Back in it. A story of family. Yes. Can the Mizraki brothers do the unthinkable and make the final table together? Me and Mike are just on the right track. If two of us make it, that'd be crazy. We'll see what happens. A story of redemption. Affleck has just been knocked out. Matt Affleck was a chip leader last year who went down on day six. Can he rebound this year? I'm here to win. A story for the ages. And Johnny Chan has done it. Over two decades ago, Johnny Chan became the last back-to-back -back winner of the main event. What about the feeling of winning this year as opposed to last year? A lot better. Now he's in position to win it again. It's not over yet. It's time to find out whose story will end and whose is just beginning. Day six starts now. Welcome to the Rio and the World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. I'm Lon McCarran along with Norman Chad. Day six. I'm excited. Where there was once hundreds of tables, now just 24 remain. Let's win it, baby. Chip leader Evan Lampria is one of five players who have over three million in chips. While former chip leaders Filippo Condio, Tony Dunst, and Phil Galfond are still in the hunt. There are 15 bracelet winners in the field, including two Ms. Rocky brothers, Robert and Michael. And one world champion, Johnny Chan, who's ninth in chips. I'm feeling pretty good. Huh? The 09 Card Player Magazine Player of the Year, Eric Baldwin, taking his seat at table two. At the feature table, a man who was a chip leader both this year and last, Matt Affleck, currently seventh in chips. I feel like a rubbernecker lot. Gonna watch Matt either zoom up the leaderboard or have an accident. He is joined by an eclectic group of players, including Nick Rainey, former tennis pro and assistant to Patrick Antonius, seated alongside Gary Kostiak, who was diagnosed with MS three years ago and is here living his dream. Gary, the short stack at this table, and Matt Affleck, the big stack. Good luck, you guys. Yeah, good luck. Man. Good luck. I need it. Oh, how the field has shrunk. Less than 3% of the field remains. The blinds are at 8 and 16,000. I was once on ESPN for tennis, and I sure hope they show it. So I have... Proof that I was at one time skinny and in he, shape. And he played tennis? Yeah, way, way back. So long, long time ago. In college? Yeah. He was think? captain of the yeah. national championship team at USC in 2002. Rainey was a four-time All-American there on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, 9-7 of hearts, and he'll lay those down. Over to the 49-year-old amateur from Canada, Gary Kostiuk, queen nine of diamonds, and he will not play. So action folds over to Danny Chamberlain, 24-year-old, part of the moneymaker effect, 6-4 of diamonds. He rooms here in Las Vegas with Chance Corneth, who won a bracelet this year. They met at the University of Colorado. He started the day with 1.6 million, and from under the gun plus three, a raise to 36,000. At Colorado, they teach you to get feisty from middle position. Over to Matt Affleck, just under three million chips, King 10 offsuit. At the main event last year, Matt bluffed all in with 10 high on a 9-9 deuce flop. He says that's not going to happen again. And that is a very active player. He makes the call to Brandon Steven, amateur poker player from Wichita, Kansas, ace 10. This guy just looks like he has a better life than I do. <laughs> and he makes the call from the small blind. The big blind folds, so three players will see a flop. It is Trey Jack Deuce. Steven is best with his A's high. Affleck missed it. Chamberlain with a gut shot. Steven checks. At Colorado, Chamberlain took continuation bets 101. I believe he got an A. <laughs> he does it here. 68,000 to Affleck now. Affleck missed that flop, but he's going to turn up the heat. 185,000. I just play cards, Lon. They're playing poker. Steven with the best hand folds. Affleck says, I play a ton of hands and I raise a ton of hands. Danny Chamberlain's got him to his left all day. Mm. And Chamberlain will lay down his draw begrudgingly. Easy game, boys. Foul's so done. One bluff deserves another. You count them? How many you get yesterday? I don't know. I got a lot yesterday. Affleck more than doubled his stack on day five. And after that hand, he has joined the elite three million chip club. He's a chip scooping monster.
Well, Norman, it's day six, and that light at the end of the tunnel is now getting very bright. So many thoughts must be running through the minds of the few left in the field. But first and foremost must be keep this incredible journey going as long as possible. Lon, I love the main event because a two-time champion is still out there. I love the main event because two brothers are still out there. But I really love the main event because Matt Affleck is still out there. The kid had the chip lead last year and then took the express out the door. Did he whine? No. Did he moan? No. Did he come back the very next year and take the chip lead again? Yes. You go, Matt. So far, so good for Matt Affleck. Let's take a look at our chip count brought to you by PokerStars.net. Matt, one of six players over the three million mark, led by Evan Lampria. German throw basketball player Michael Skidner in second. How about Johnny Chan in the top ten with 2.6 million? The average stack just over one million. Looking out at the sparsely populated field where only two dozen tables remain and only one main event champion, Johnny Chan. And a hand with Matt Kekawan, a two-time bracelet winner. Chan, the last main event champion left in the field, and he looms large here. Remember, Stu Unger won his third title 16 years after he went back-to-back. -back. It's been 22 years since Chan went back-to-back. -back. Chan just re-raised Keikoan pre-flop, and Keikoan will lay it down. Johnny Chan with 10 bracelets, his most recent one in 2005. Keikoan won his second bracelet this year in a limit hold'em event. Michael Mizraki finished eighth in that event. Johnny Chan, a force in this main event. Speaking of the grinder, well, there he is. He began the day with almost 1.8 million chips. He's in a hand with Peter Jetton and Tommy Venus, both of whom checked the flop. Grinder bet 100,000. Venus raised to 250. Venus is 56 years old. He's a relic in this field. The flop was Jack, ace, nine, two diamonds. Peter Jetton will lay it down. Don't you play? I got, do you have any green? I had a three. All right, I raise. Grinder re-raises. And Jetton's happy he got out of the hand. Grinder makes it 600,000. Venus has been playing at the World Series 33 years. Of course, that's longer than Grinder's been alive. It's only 350 more. It's only 350? Yeah, it's a summer clearance special. Venus hears the talk and lays it down. It is the year of the Mizrakis, and Grinder is the pinup boy. Yeah, show him my hand. Oh, it's too late. All right, forget it. Grinder <laughs> over two million chips now. The only other Mizraki left is brother Robert. He just re-raised all in pre-flop for his last 238,000. Action over to Stephen Norton, who made the initial raise. Robert, the sibling elder of the Mizraki dynasty at 31. This would be for most of Norton's chips. And Norton will lay it down. Robert Mizraki hangs in there. Mizraki Palooza continues. Robert has been the brother grinding the last couple of days. Let's catch up with Jean Robert Ballon. He just saw seven on the turn and a hand with two time bracelet winner Jesper Hogo of Denmark. You know, I sure hope Jean Robert doesn't have any poker playing brothers. I don't think there's a poker room in the world that can handle two Ballons. Jean Robert bets 65,000. Hogo, as a teenager, was a member of the Danish national table tennis team. He was the first to win a World Series bracelet here and in Europe, and he makes the call. River card now six of spades, a third spade on board. Ballon bets out 125,000. I hate that type of sloppy bet. I'm on. Hogo moves all in. Now there's an orderly bet. Almost 600,000. What a river. You go all in on the turn, you got me. I mean, I guess we could have the same hand. 458. This is one of those times where if you're bluffing, I got to give you a nice play. He got me. I lay down the ace king. Trip aces. Big lay down. People are giving me a lot of respect for this table, huh? Now I know I made a good lay down. <laughs> wow. I wasn't sure if I made a good lay down until that comment. Woo. Good lay down, Robert. Good lay down. Only Hogo knows that for sure as he stacks a couple hundred thousand of Ballon's chips. Cheer up, Jean Robert. You still have ammunition to play the game. At Ultimate Bet, we constantly perfect and test our software to ensure it's the fastest, most advanced around. We can solve the best. So our tournament structure and player interface, rock like no other. But there's one test that totally cleans up at the table. One test that truly defines the ultimate poker experience. Ooh. Nice. nice. Very nice. Right. The World Series of Poker.
Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back inside the Rio, where over at Table 2 sits last year's Card Player Magazine Player of the Year, Eric Baldwin. He is joined by Adam Levy, who finished 48th in the 2008 main event. Also here is Russell Rosenblum, who finished 6th in 2002. The last woman left in the field, Bree Zuckerman, is here, as well as David Baker from Katy, Texas, who has cashed seven times in this World Series. Action on Baldwin. Looks down at Pocket Queens. The Wisconsin at Whitewater grad recently donated $200,000 to the school to pay for lights at its baseball field. The clubhouse is now named in his honor. A raise to 38000 to Rafael Sanz Rodrigo with ace jack on the button. I'm all in. And the Spanish poker pro wants to play for all his chips. Action folds back around to Baldwin. He's got Baldwin covered. Baldwin calls all in with his queens. Good luck. Good luck. Baldwin, a two-and-a-half-to-one favorite here to stick around. Baldwin at risk. The flop is deuce 5-6. Uh, it's a clean flop, I'm guessing. Yeah, Baldwin's still way ahead. This is Baldwin's 12th World Series cash. It's the first for Sanz Rodrigo. Now the turn card. And Baldwin hits his queen. And that will end the hand as he doubles through Sanz Rodrigo. Sanz Rodrigo now crippled, left with less than 10 big blinds. Thank you. Double ups are better than double plays. Baldwin still with about half the chip average. And that's just crazy that we're still for 200 left and we're still <laughs> in. From an original field of over 7,300, everyone still remaining should be very proud. Let's go out in the field. James Carroll is in a pot against Johnny Lawton on the turn. Action is on James Carroll. You know, when the main event started, it looked to me to be an older field in recent years. But the older guys are gone. 20-somethings dominate the field. Baldwin's 27. Sanz Rodrigo, 26. Carroll's 24. Lawton is 25. The main event is a younger man's game than ever. Carroll just bet 130000 into the Norwegian Poker Pro, and Johnny Lawton will lay it down. Nice. Lawton says he had pocket nines. James Carroll. Carroll shows ace, queen of diamonds, top pair, top kicker, nut flush draw. It's all good. The two young guns exchanging information with each other, filing it away for future use. James Carroll closing in on the three million chip mark. Elsewhere, Joseph Chung already has $3 million. He's a big favorite to knock out Gianluca Speranza, who's at risk with only a pair of aces. Chung flopped, aces up. The turn card keeps Chung ahead. And we're still very young here. Chung 24, Speranza 23. Speranza needs a king. It's a four on the river. Chung will win. Adds a half million more chips to his stack and knocks out Gianluca Speranza. Joseph Chung, South Korean born, moved to the United States when he was six. Not this time. The young Joseph Chung is the new main event chip leader with almost four million chips. Chung, one of only a half dozen players over the three million chip mark. Just 196 players remain in the 2010 main event. Matt Affleck over at the feature table, also one of those over three million. Matt has chosen a purple Washington Huskies jersey from his collection today. How's the Husky football team this year? They'll be good this year. Got a Heisman Trophy winner this year. Like the Heisman Trophy, the main event bracelet is the highest achievement in poker, one that Matt fell short of last year. I get reminded all the time when I play in other tournaments around the world. People are, oh, you were chip leader in the main event. What happened? Matt Affleck is once again the chip leader. He currently has over $2 million. Last year, I walked out of the tournament thinking I blew the best opportunity in my life. I lost one big hand, and I didn't handle it well. I wasn't able to stay composed, and it definitely affected my play. I eventually got knocked out a few hours later. I went from 3 million chips to out in about six hours. Matt Affleck has just been knocked out at 80th place. This is the second time I've ever played the main event, and both times I was chip leader throughout day four. I'm ten times the player I am since last year. The biggest thing I learned from last year is this tournament is a marathon, it's not a sprint. The person who's going to win this tournament is the person who stays the most composed. I thought I'd never get this opportunity again, and here we are again one year later in the exact same spot. So we'll see if I can not blow all my chips this year. He wants to avoid what he calls the Matt Affleck blow-up. And after last year, he says his mother just wants him to fold to the November 9. I <laughs> know you won't let that happen, Norman. Action on Jared Ingles here, 23 years old, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with ace 10 of spades. Before becoming a poker pro, he used to work with his grandfather, cutting and bailing hay in Louisiana. 30 cents a bale. 
35000 is the raise to Danny Chamberlain with pocket queens. I honestly don't think he can see his whole cards from behind those shades. Take them off. <laughs> he re-raises to 85000 Over to Affleck now on the button with ace six. When he was in college, Matt quit his job as a cashier and became an online grinder playing sit and goes. Those are usually one table tournaments. He played 20 at a time and he was good. Man, he's going to four bet it. A re-raise to 200,000. Matt, a little too active for my tastes. He's got a weak ace. I wish he'd just muck it and check Mariner's scores on his iPhone. Ingles folded. Chamberlain will call for 115,000 more. Affleck got his finance degree at the University of Washington, but doesn't plan to look for work. He'd rather just bully people at the poker table. Heads up to the flop. It's eight, Trey, six. Chamberlain and his queens are still ahead. Affleck got a piece of that with middle pair. These are the two biggest stacks at the table going head-to-head. Chamberlain checked. Affleck now with a pair of sixes. 225,000. Matt says he's a really good post-flop hand reader, and he usually is. Right now, Matt needs some reading glasses. Chamberlain just calls with the best hand. This could be the Matt Affleck blow-up in progress. All right, turn card now. It's another Trey Affleck, now a 9-to-1 dog. Chamberlain checks again. Affleck way behind. And now he puts on the brakes. I think his mother whispered something in his ear. River card is a seven of hearts. Chamberlain with a check mark with his queens up. And he checks a third time. Don't do it, son. You're 23. I want you to live to see 24. <laughs> he does check. Chamberlain shows the winning hand. Well, no blow up there for Matt. Just a costly dust up. Chamberlain did what he could to induce a blow up, but Matt Affleck would not oblige. So Chamberlain up to almost 2.4 million chips now. Affleck slowed down before he got too crazy, but he still took almost a half million chip hit, and that's too much like last year for comfort. Life is all about challenges and how we face them, the plays we make, the risks we take. That's why I love poker. It's where I get my buzz. And compared to that, this is just a walk in the park. With more free to enter tournaments than any other site, challenge yourself at PokerStars.com and find the poker star in you. Welcome back inside the Rio and the main event. It's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. My motto is, Lon, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> All right, action will begin on Matt Affleck, and Matt looks down at King Trey, and he will sit out this wild card hand to amateur Brandon Steven, and he has the wild card hand. Kansas businessman? Hmm. He owns a, a bunch of car dealerships and health clubs. Steven will raise to 41000 From the cutoff, I'm going to put him on ace-nine offsuit. Nick Rainey in the small blind with pocket eights. He holds the record for most sit and goes in a month. 16,000. That's a lot of sitting and going. That is a lot. He makes the call. And so it'll be heads up, Rainey and Steven, the mystery hand. We're talking 500 sit and goes a day, every day for a month. Here's the flop. It is 10 King 9. Rainey sees three over cards to his pocket eights. That can't sit too well with him. That flop might have hit Steven with a hand like Ace 9 or Ace 10. Rainey first to act. He's going to test the waters. 39,000. 500 sit and goes a day. That's 20 an hour every hour, and that's if you never sleep. How do you sit there that long? And when do you go? <laughs> Steven with the call with whatever hand he's got. Well, Steven's got a pair, I think. He's not sure if it's good. Tray of clubs on the turn. Rainey still with just the pocket eights. I think Steven's got like a pair of nines or tens, and he's afraid that the king hit Rainey. Rainey. Gonna bet it again. 68,000 this time. Randy keeps betting like he's got better than pocket eights. Steven. Well, must have something. He makes the call. This is like a sit and go, except no one's going anywhere. <laughs> All right, the river card now. King Jack and King Queen. Oh, Randy thinks Steven has kings. There's a seven of clubs on the river. Either one of those good? <laughs> yeah. Rainey checks the third club. Rainey gives up. Steven. 
Oh, no. He has chips in hand again. 107,000. I was wrong again, Lon. Uh, Stevens got better than middle pair here. That smells like a value bet. And if Rainey trusts his earlier read, he's supposed to give this up. Nick Rainey makes that call. Two pair. He says two pair. He shows 10-9. He flopped two pair. Listen, that counts as a loss for me. What's new? And Steven will win the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. I was thinking, he checked Queen Jack there. What do you check Queen Jack there? What do you check Queen Jack there? It's one of those, you're going to look like a hero or look like a total idiot hands and look like an idiot. <laughs> Nick, don't worry about looking like an idiot. It gets me into all the better restaurants. Well, better luck next time, Nick Rainey. Better luck next time, Norman Chad. Out in the field to check in on OMG Clay Aiken or Phil Galfond. He just re-raised Ronnie Barda pre-flop. Barda, a 27-year-old poker pro from Massachusetts. You got to know I have a big hand. I think you do know that. I'm still shot over the top. Watching Galfond on day five line was a treat, even though he was off his game, but he always handles himself well. Two blackjacks. Barda. Thinks he's beat and folds. Barta knocked out Dan Harrington on day four. The 27-year-old gives it up to the 25-year-old. Phil happy to pick up any chips. He's about 300,000 below chip average. Over to his former table mate, Filippo Condio. He's on a pot right now with Christopher George. Filippo checked. George bet 65,000. Condio's pretty excitable. I don't think you can relax him. He might be massage proof. Condio with a check raised to 155,000 gets George to fold. And the Italian pro shows just ace high. There you go. Condio shows a bluff. He's got a lot of game. Condio picks up that pot and he's hovering just around the chip average. Johnny Chan has been moved to a new table along with his 3 million plus chips. Robert Mizraki is here as well. Action on Johnny right away. He's under the gun. And he's going to raise it up to 40000 He's been laying low so far here on day six. Action over to Rob Pisano, a 26-year-old living in Vegas. And he re-raises to 210000 Back to Chan, who comes back over the top to 440000 Chan did not hesitate too long before making it a four bet. So how will Pisano react to that from the two-time champ? Come on. Pisano and an immediate call from Chan Pisano with aces. Chan with kings. First hand, they just pull in. Massive pot. Pisano looking to double up to the chip lead. Chan helpless here, poised to lose three quarters of his chips. First hand, I sit down. We just put ice. Pisano's hooked the whale. Almost four and a half million chips in the pot, and that flop is no good for Chan. Uh, I'm dead. Turn card is a seven. Chan one card from a massive blow. Chan has to have a king, or Pisano doubles up big. The river card is another four, and just like that, Rob Pisano's the new chip leader, and Johnny Chan is decimated. Chan runs into aces, and his main event runs into a ditch. What a time for Pisano to get aces. Johnny Chan sits mob and stunned at the devastating turn of events. Once among the chip leaders, most of his chips are gone. Hmm, is he bluffing? Could be. German ship leader. I don't trust Germans. Two cards could mean anything. Let's raise the stakes, frighten them off. No one to play with. Darn. So play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. All right, all right, okay. Now it's time for Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. Whether it's a main event with thousands of players or a circuit event with just two left, there's always something to be learned. During the 05 Atlantic City Circuit event, Eric Lindgren was heads up against amateur Henry Tran and facing a tough decision. I pick up the queen ten of hearts and the button. I just nuisance raised it to 40,000. I kind of wanted to play a small ball poker with Henry because he was an amateur. So Henry calls the raise. Going to the flop, it comes out 6-4 queen, two queens for Eric Lindgren. Real good flop for my hand. I have top pair. Henry surprises me, and he, and he bets out. 105,000. Oh, man. He likes to put chips into play. One look at Henry, and you know he's an action player. Pretty sure I'm ahead, so I raise him 175 more. I'm blowing you. Oh, and Tran's going to push it all in. 
Really? You love me? That's a big bet, man. I'm kind of talking to him, trying to get a little information. There's just no reason to believe that I'm behind in this hand. Let's go. Uh, he's right to say let's go. I need the... Yeah, I know you got the 5-7. I knew it. The cards are coming, and he misses on the turn. River card. Yes! Oh, he got the three! I'm happy with how I played the hand. And uh, moral of the story, if you can't take bad beats, don't play poker. It's going to happen. Just 180 main event runners left chasing that bracelet and trying to dodge the bad beats. Well, Matt's mother wouldn't mind seeing him avoid any beats and hold on to his chips for a while. Where are you from? Alberta, Canada. Yeah? Alberta. <clears throat> I'm a huge tennis fan, never swung a rocket in my life. Nick Rainey, a former tennis pro who used to be Patrick Antonius' assistant. I knew I should have learned to play tennis. <laughs> All right, fold it over to Affleck. Ace six off. Matt from Seattle is rotating between seven Seattle jerseys during the main event. He needs to make it to day seven so he can utilize every jersey. A raise to 48,000. Christian Harder with pocket trays. This is Harder's seventh cash at the World Series, and every previous one, he finished in the top 35. The 22-year-old makes the call. At this point of the main event line, if you're over 25, I guess you're on Medicare. <laughs> Nine, eight, five. Harder still ahead. Affleck picked up a gut shot. Matt first to act. Here comes Affleck, the aggressor. He needs a seven for a straight, betting his draw, 65,000. Matt says he tries to control his opponents, get them to do what he wants them to do. I imagine he wants Harder to fold right here. Harder makes the call. Harder says, I know you can have anything, buddy. I'm sticking with you. Turn card now. Is an ace, and that puts Matt in the captain's chair with a pair of aces. Well, Matt's aggression on the flop was not rewarded, but the turn rewards him with a gift ace. And he's going to bet it again, of course. 115,000. Harder's going to lay it down. Give Harder credit there. He's not put in a penny when he was behind. Affleck takes that pot from Harder. He's back over 3 million. I wouldn't mind seeing Matt in a suit. Tony Dunst could help him. Back into the field where another 4 million chip pot has been built. Two players were at risk pre-flop. Manik Lusher standing is all in with pocket sixes. John May has pocket aces. John Raisner just flopped a set of queens to send the two of them reeling. Three pocket pairs collide and John May's pocket ace is about to be cracked. The turn card now is a king. Lusher now drawing dead. His main event is over. May needs a miracle. May needs a river ace to survive. It's another king and Raisner with queens full scores that huge pot knocking out two opponents two 21 year olds to the rail and a grizzled 24 year old john racer takes all their chips and the 2010 main event has a new chip leader welcome john racer to the top of the leaderboard i don't care if he's the chip leader line he's got to fix that cap at another table world series bracelet winner david benjamin was all in with kings the turn card has former chip leader evan lampria drawing dead and benjamin will double up courtesy double up Lampria gives up about 13% of his big stack there. And trust me, no one in the room wants to see Benjamin get a lot of chips in front of him. To the grinder's table now. This is my best hand I have all series. He's in a hand on the river with Peter Jetton. Action to Peter. You know, Peter Jetton looks so much happier on his Peter Jetton button. Poker is a grind. After a third club fell on the river, Jetton bets about half the pot, 225000 And Ms. Rocky, the aggressive grinder, raises to 600000 So you couldn't sell a Peter Jetton button with that sad mug on it. And Jetton surrenders. Mizraki will stack the winnings. Maybe it was the best hand grinder had the whole World Series. Peter Jetton looks like he was blindsided. Michael over two and a half million now. Nearby, Michael's older brother Robert is all in and ahead with Ace Queen against the big stack of Rob Pisano and his Ace Trey. Robert and Michael each has made three final tables at this World Series, and now with the main event dwindling, Robert and Michael Bizrocki are still here. It's remarkable. And Robert flops Broadway, which means Robert will survive his all in. <laughs> Turn Jack King. No, no, they can still split the pot if a queen comes. Turn off the nuts. He's off the nuts. He's ahead. Third card is another king. Fasano still looking for a chop. Fasano would need a queen to make Broadway two and split the pot. The river card. A tray, and Robert Mizraki hangs in there. He still has plenty of wood to chop, though. My favorite hand. Uh, I think he's mocking me. He knows that's my least favorite hand. <laughs> Robert flops the nuts and will stick around. Must be nice. 175 left and still two Ms. Rockies as day six of the main event rolls on.
World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio over to table two where Eric Basebaldi Baldwin is sitting by as David Baker with pocket sevens called an all-in from Paul Evans who shoved with a suited ace five. The right call regardless of the turn. Baker, a poker pro with 20 World Series caches. Evans, a California business owner, high school track coach, and poker pro has 10 World Series caches. Don't knock out my San Jose Sharks fan. Eight tray. Queen Evans gets no help. Take a three on the turn. Baker is 38 years old. Evans, 46. This is like senior on senior violence at this main event. Turn card down. Five of clubs. Evans paired his five, which gives him a couple more outs. Your San Jose Sharks fan, however, is all but out of here, Lon. River card. Queen of clubs on the river. Evans needs an ace, ace or a five. It's a king of diamonds. Baker will win the hand. Paul Evans eliminated in 173rd place. There's a call I don't make every day. <laughs> The Sharks mm. often finish in 173rd, don't they? Yeah, just like my Sharks, they get close, but never the gold ring. David Baker from Texas is not David Bakes Baker. He claims to be the original David Baker since he's older than Bakes. But Bakes was the one who won a bracelet this year. Over now to the feature table, Nick Rainey in a hand with Christian Harder, who raised a 48,000 with Jack 7 offsuit. Rainey made the call with King 9 off from the big blind. They're waiting for the flop. Two players with nothing, like you and me, Lon, in a singles bar. The flop 10, queen 4, Rainey with a king high gut shot. Harder left with jack high. Rainey checks. They still got nothing. Harder is going to bet his no pair, 62,000. Harder thinks he can turn nothing into something. Rainey with his better no pair because of his overcard calls. They're playing poker, Lon. Both are fishing without bait. And we're still in that singles bar with nothing. <laughs> Turn card is another 10. Rainey's still best. Rainey looking at his chips, and that gets Harder's full attention. 84. 84,000. It looks like Rainey was calling the flop to bluff the turn. And Christian Harder's hand is not worth a cup of warm spit. So this should be over. Harder. Posturing maybe a little bit. Does finally lay it down. And we're still in that singles bar line with just a couple empty mugs of beer. <laughs> and Christian Harder gives up a few chips to Nick Rainey. I don't do the whole all-in thing. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a small ball, just super net. Nick Rainey is a pro athlete turned pro poker player who took a unique path to eventually finding this competitive game. Well, I played professional tennis out of college and then won 14 pro titles and traveled around the world. But... I got a little tired of the travel, so got a gig here in Vegas teaching tennis at uh, the Hilton. I was in the right place at the right times and met a couple uh, well-known poker players and uh, was able to get a job as Patrick Antonis' uh, personal assistant. That was my job, to just make his life as easy as possible so he could focus on his family and playing games. And in the back of my head, the goal was to really learn poker. Meeting Patrick, you could not meet a better guy, and he had full access to always watch him play, give me his thoughts on why he did what he did, and I could definitely appreciate how hard it is to become that great at poker. And one of the things I learned the most from him is how much work goes into it. Good game. Good yeah. Thanks, Patrick. You know, he did good. He made the money, but uh, hopefully I can take it down and uh, make him proud. Yo, Patrick, you out there? My number's 555-5555. I'll wash your car. I'll do your dry clean. I'll even shave your head. Call me. <laughs> out in the field where the shift of power can be felt at Johnny Chan's table after he suffered that staggering loss of most of his chips to Rob Pisano. Both Pisano and Chan are sitting by as the hand is in progress there. Oh, my God. Me. Theo Tran exposed his hand at the table, ace oh, five. We didn't see the suits. Jonathan Driscoll had raised pre-flop. Right right? Well, Tran okay. thought Driscoll was all in, so he flipped over his cards. Okay. He exposed his hand, and even though it was accidental, he will get a penalty. Tran forced to just call. His hand is not dead. The flop, oh. ace four, five. He hits aces up. <laughs> Tran probably would prefer if Driscoll didn't know that. But Theo's given him a personal hole card cam. Driscoll can't beat aces up and folds out of turn. Well, good news for Theo. He wins the pot. But the bad news, he lost an opportunity to maybe double up. And now he has to sit out one round because he exposed his cards. Elsewhere, jean Robert Balland in a hand against Pascal Lefrancois, who bet the flop with the nut flush draw. jean Robert calls the top pair. Turn card is a jack. Lefrancois picked up a straight draw. LeFrancois, another young gun, 23-year-old bracelet winner from Quebec. Checked over to him. 
And he's going to bet it. 150000 And Jean Robert comes along. Jean Robert now has check called him on the flop and the turn. LeFrancois missed his draws. Ballon with the check mark and checks. LeFrancois will bet at 325,000. More heat. Well, as you mentioned, he had missed his flush. He missed his straight. He fires out again. Jean Robert asking himself, what can I beat? Ballon with one pair. LeFrancois bet every step of the way. Milan makes the call with the tens, and it will be a profitable call. Yeah, it looked like a bad call, but it is a good call. Give Jean Robert credit. He frustrates LaFrancois. Boys, good I'm call. stubborn. Good call, sir. <laughs> good call. What are you talking about? That's a terrible call. I only have top hair. That's a terrible call. Good read in that case. I'm just a donkey, and you can't bluff a donkey. That's the first thing that they taught me in poker. Because you can't bluff the donkey, don't even bother. Milan approaching two million chips here on day six. We play because poker's not a scratch-off ticket, a half-court jumper, or a knock on wood. It's no game of luck, poker. It's a game of patience and well-timed aggression. We know when we play, a little luck helps. But luck can't explain why final tables have so many familiar faces. We play at FullTillPoker.com. Prestigious prize in poker, the bracelets. Presented by the official WSOP game on Facebook. Play online now. It's been quite a year for Michael the Grinder Mizraki. Out of a field of 171 grinder, found himself at his third final table of the year in the 10K Limit Hold'em event. Ultimately, he was eliminated in eighth place, and in the end, poker pro Matt Kekawan went on to win his second World Series bracelet and over $425,000. There are the two remaining Mizrakis. Robert not doing so well. Grinder with a lot of chips. We'll get him. The Mizraki tandem, not the only brothers who went deep in this main event. Matt Kekawan was eliminated earlier today. His brother Todd finished in 421st. Over to table two, Eric Baldwin is sitting by as Russell Rosenblum is all in and ahead on the flop against Brian Jensen. Russell's deuces against Jensen's ace king. Rosenblum, sixth at the main event when Robert Varconi won in 2002, and he half jokes that he's been running bad ever since. That seven puts a straight draw on the board and brings a chop into play. Rosenblum well ahead, but he's willing to bargain for a chop pot. He's rooting for a ten. That's how risk averse I am. I'll take the ten. <laughs> <laughs> Only an ace or a king knocks out Rosenblum. The river is the king. Jensen oh, spikes the, the winner to send Russell Rosenblum out the door. Boy, the man says he's running bad. He just ran when bad. <laughs> 40-year-old local player Russell Rosenblum uh. gone in the 169th place. Out in the field, it seems former chip leader Rob Pisano's at it again. With ace-10, he called the all-in of Randall Tagawa holding ace-king. Pisano paired his kicker on the turn, and with that blank on the river, Pisano is stacking chips again. So Tagawa is gone. Pisano has a master's in chemical engineering, and right now the 26-year-old pro is mastering the main event. He adds another million to his stack, and once again is the chip leader with more than 5.6 million. And Johnny Chan's thinking, a lot of those chips over there used to be mine. Johnny knows you don't own any chips until the final card is dealt. You're just renting. Johnny has fallen off the leaderboard. His nemesis, Rob Pisano, has shot to the top. John Racer and Joseph Chung amongst the leaders, as is amateur Michael Skinder. The chip average, almost $1.4 million. Matt Affleck at our feature table has not added a lot onto his chip stack today, but remains in seventh place. Nick Rainey started day six with nearly 950000 and is now up to $1.1 million, still below the chip average. Action on Danny Chamberlain. And on the Jack Link's beef jerky pocket, Cam Chamberlain has eight deuce of hearts. I love beef jerky. 24-year-old yeah. Denver poker pro. Reaching for chips with eight deuce, a raise to 44000 Under the gun plus one lawn is the new hijack. Affleck would have Chamberlain dominated, but he folds his suit at 8-4. Matt's mother and I both happy he folded. Brandon Steven with pocket sevens. Steven has five children, and all of them are telling him to play the pocket sevens. From the cutoff seat, he makes the call. Over to Jordan Siegel now. Siegel will not play. Nick Rainey in the small blind. Rainey 
with pocket tents. I think Matt's mother and Patrick Antonius would tell him to raise with those tents. <laughs> 44? 44. Sounds like a call to me. Kostiuk in the big blind now. With 6-5, and he won't play, so three players will see the flop. Chamberlain wondering, what have I done? Both Steven and Rainey respecting the early position raise of Chamberlain, who has eight deuce. Here's the flop, 9-7, a Steven flops a set. Rainey first to act, his 10's now way behind, and he checks. Chamberlain. And here comes the class bully holding squad douche. Yeah, he bets 63,000. One problem with that. <laughs> the set of Steven with a smooth call. And Steven hoping Chamberlain has an ace because then he's hooked. Rainey. One last look at his tens. Yeah, he folds. Rainey gets out of the way without any major damage. So heads up now. Take the shades off, son, and you shall see the light. Turn card is a ten. Hey, Nick, your set of tens called you weren't home. Now, he did the right thing. It doesn't feel like it at the moment. Chamberlain with an up and down straight draw. Chamberlain continues to be aggressive. That's enough to put Steven all in over half a million. Come on. And Steven calls. Well, Chamberlain's line on this hand was I can muscle out the smaller stack. Chamberlain's aggression might have worked if Steven only had a pair. So Steven in control with the set. Oh, Chamberlain needing to hit his draw to take this hand away. Can I do the Norman Chad? Wow, I bet Randy wishes he called. He would have turned the set. <laughs> Actually, we leave that stupid stuff for Lon. <laughs> By the way, does my voice sound like that? <laughs> a little bit. Well, Chamberlain looking to put a nasty beat on Steven. He needs a six or a jack to knock him out. The river card now is a five, and Steven doubles up and a bit more thanks to the kindness of Danny Chamberlain and Nick Rainey. Well, no real emotion from either side, but Brandon Stevens' heart has got to be pumping. He will happily take those chips as Nick Rainey is left to bemoan his laydown. Bad beats you can't control, but a regrettable fold will stick with you a long time. Welcome back. Pro basketball player Michael Skinder has Jesse Martin at risk at one of the outer tables. Skinder flopped a king to overtake the Queens of Martin. Martin with five caches at this World Series. 16 lifetime. Turn card to seven. No help seven. to Martin. Martin needs a queen. Four. Thank you, Michael. A four will send Jesse Martin on his way. Ooh, hey, nice. Martin wins nice over $57,000 going out in 157th place. All the way, baby. <laughs> Skender appears to be a better poker player than Charles Barkley. How about that amateur with over four million chips? And Robert Mizraki's raking in more chips, though barely hanging in there well below chip average. Little bro grinder in a big pot on the river against Dewey Lay. Grinder has the check mark with pocket sevens. Lay bet 500,000 with Jack High. Lay missed his straight, trying to bluff Grinder off his motley pair. Big decision for Grinder here. Makes that call. And Dewey Lay's busted straight draw is going to cost him, and the grinder wins another big pot. I'm writing a song about the Mizrakis, Lon. It's called We Are the World, Series of Poker. <laughs> Michael's wife, Lily, in the background looks concerned, but don't worry, Mrs. Grinder. Your man's raking in more chips. And Lily told me she told Grinder he was going to have a great World Series. She says she's psychic until this year, the World Series, usually a struggle for Michael Mizraki. Michael, just shy of $4 million, is fourth in chips right now. Back to the feature table. Matt Affleck sits with about a million less than Grinder now, but still with a top 10 chip stack. Action is on Matt. Pocket eights. Matt says his style is perfect for the main event. Play a lot of hands and keep them guessing. This is Matt's fourth World Series cash, one of which is in Raz. He raises it up to 48000 Nick Rainey on the button. Ace King. 44 again? 48. 48. 48. I think Nick would have had a better tennis career if he played without the hoodie. Look at Sampras. Look at Federer. No hoodies. He makes the call. Not only was Nick a personal assistant to Patrick Antonius, but also to poker pro Andrew Robel. Ah, you can have that job. Gary Kostiuk in the small blind with ace deuce of clubs. You know, Matt is aggressive. Nick is active. I don't know if the amateur wants to play out of position against the aggressive guy and the active guy. Kostiuk folds his weak ace. So heads up, Rainey and Affleck. 
And the flop is... Oh, what a flop for a tennis player. Ace, ace, seven. Rainy flops, trips. Kostiak doesn't realize how fortunate he is to be out of the hand. Affleck with two pair and way behind. He's first to act. He loves to bet. Those the odds are against Rainey having an ace. 65,000. Aggressive. Rainey with a big hand. Just a call. Active, but not aggressive. And a little slow. Third guard now. Is a deuce and oops, Kostiak folded what would now be a full house. No help to Affleck there. And he does slow down. Passive. Rainey. With a 95% hand. That's 93,000. Active and aggressive. And well, he's pretty certain he has the best hand. I don't think Matt could stick around. And he does finally surrender. Yeah, well, Matt was behind the guy in the hand and the guy out of the hand. So, I call it ace yeah, Charter, you know I'm a flush master. <laughs> you you're a flush? I had ace two's Jack in the spoon. Oh, you had ace. Ace king, ace king. Ace deuce, I really want to see. I had ace two's close. You can show him. I would have called you, Jerry. Not saying he would have called an all in earlier in the hand. Yeah, ace king. Good fold. Good fold indeed. A well-deserved pat on the back for Matt Affleck. And it's Gary Kostiak now who's left wondering what could have been down to only 253,000 chips. While Nick Rainey, who started the day with 953,000, is up to almost 1.3 million. Back to the field, the once high-flying former champ Johnny Chan has all his chips in the middle, just over half a million. His pocket jacks way behind the aces of Jonathan Driscoll. Chan has run into a buzzsaw and is about to be busted. First his kings run into aces, now his jacks run into aces. Two big hands for Johnny today run into two bigger hands. And now the flop. It is. Trey, six, seven, all blanks for Johnny Chan. Chan was sailing along with three million chips, and two hands are going to sweep him out of here. Turn cards a five. Johnny's still with hope. <laughs> Chan needs a jack or a four, or his main event is over. The river card is a tray, and Johnny Chan's main event is over, amazingly enough. This game is cruel on two big pocket pairs, two devastating losses, and now hopes for a third main event title are gone. Driscoll sends the two-time main event champ out of the Rio in 156th place. Johnny Chan busted? Whoa. It's 2.6. Wow. Yes. Matt Affleck knows that feeling well. Let that be a warning to all the other big stacks in the room. So as the great Johnny Chan walks out, 155 players remain, each hoping to do what Johnny's done twice before, win the big one. For Norman Chan, I'm Lon McCarran. Day 6 continues here at the World Series of Poker.